Krishna. So it's my great honor to be here and have all the wonderful devotees association in New Dwaraka. So with all your, of your blessings, we will be reading from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 17 and text 16. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yanatas Mai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutade Svayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Svapadantikam Panchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavanepya Vaishnavepya Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradhar Shiva Sajay Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vidaya Mahat Prema Puro Vibhur Nirmayakshadeyada Mushupurusha Bhungte Ganan Sudasa Sudasad Makalan Krishishta Magavan Vacham Sime Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Rakyo i paramo dharma Rakyo i paramo dharma Svadharma stanupalanam Svadharma stanupalanam Shasato nyanyadha shastram Shasatanya nyadha shastram Atpa anapaj utpadhan iha Anapaj utpadhan iha Ragyo hi paramo dharma Svadharma stanupalanam Shasato nyan yadha shastram Anapajyut padhaniva Hare Krishna Agyahi Paramo Dharma Ladies, please. 
Synonyms Ragya of the king or the executive head. He certainly Paramaha Supreme Dharmaha Occupational Duty Swadharmasta One who is faithful in his prescribed duty. Anupalanam, giving protection always. Shasataha, while ruling. Anyan, others. Yadha, according to. Shastram, rulings of scriptures. Anapadi, without danger. Utpatan, Persons going astray. Iha, as a matter of fact. Translation purpose by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Kirai. The supreme duty of the ruling king is to give all protection to law abiding persons and to chastise those who stray from the ordinances of the scriptures in ordinary time when there is no emergency purport in the scriptures there is mention of apadharma or occupational duty at times of extraordinary happenings it is said that sometimes the great sage Vishwamitra had to live on the flesh of dogs in some extraordinary dangerous position in cases of emergency, one may be allowed to live on the flesh of animals of all descriptions, but that does not mean that there should be regular slaughterhouses to feed the animal eaters and that the system should be encouraged by the state. No one should try to live on flesh in ordinary times simply for the sake of the palate. If anyone does so, the king or the executive head should punish him for gross enjoyment. There are regular scriptural injunctions for different persons engaged in different occupational duties, and one who follows them is called Svadharmastha, or faithful in one's prescribed duties. In the Bhagavad Gita 1848, it is advised that one should not give up his occupational prescribed duties, even if they are not always flawless. Such svadharma might be violated in cases of emergency. If one is forced by circumstances, but they cannot be, if one is forced in, by circumstances, but they cannot be violated in ordinary times, the state executive head is to see that such svadharma is not changed by the follower, whatever it may be, and he should give all protection to the follower of svadharma. The violator is subject to punishment in terms of the Shastra and the duty of the king is to see that everyone strictly follows his occupational duty as prescribed in the scripture. Ragyahi paramo dharma svadharma svanupalanam shasato nyan yadha shastram anapad anapad ut the supreme duty of the ruling king is to give all protection to law-abiding persons and to chastise those who stray from the ordinances of the scriptures in ordinary times when there is no emergency. So these are the words of Parikshut Maharaj explaining what is the dharma. 
and uh, talking to the bull and uh, first cant of Srimad Bhagavatam is extremely important for us because uh, this was the canto where he and Srila Prabhupada invested all the guiding principles of Krishna consciousness because he was not sure what the future will hold. So at least he wanted the devotees to have full idea what is Krishna consciousness, even if they happen to have only first canto. Luckily, Srila Prabhupada stayed with us long enough to give us practically entire Srimad Bhagavatam. Nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that first canto has the most important points uh, for our Krishna conscious development. And so this is one of those points where in uh, Maharaj Parikshit is explaining um, what is dharma and how is it connected to Swadharma. And uh, the first um, paragraph of the purport is dedicated to explaining something which is called apadharma. Apadharma means duties in extraordinary or emergency circumstances. Meaning that something which is acceptable in extraordinary circumstances is not acceptable in ordinary circumstances. And uh, he specifically gives example of meat eating that it can actually be allowed of course, not the cow flesh eating, but eating of some uh, lower animals can be allowed in extraordinary circumstances. And so we can see that principle is very clearly uh, manifest in other scriptures as well. And of course, in terms of religious um, heritage. We only have two major divisions in the Western, in, in all over the planet, and these are Abrahamic and Indian religions. Right? There are three Abrahamic religions: Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and there are two Indian religions. Hinduism and Buddhism, this is at least according to the uh, modern uh, scholars of religion. And so you can see that even uh, in um, Abrahamic religions, the common scripture for all is Old Testament. And so the very beginning, Genesis, actually this is how it opens, right? That it says that God gave man um, fruit, fruits and seeds, vegetarian food, right? And so this is how God wanted human beings to subsist. But then you can see there was a flood and then after the flood, God said, okay, you can eat certain types of animals. And the logic is pretty clear that after the flood, what do you have? There is nothing growing, right? There, it's really emergency circumstance. And so in the emergency, yes, you can actually have some animals. Uh, but, you know, emergency is different from regular circumstances. And so for, there is a rule and there is exception. But when you bring up this um, argument with Christians, they say, you know, but God haven't canceled the exception, so we still follow it. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it requires little intelligence to follow, to abide by the rules of the Supreme Lord. And that's why, because people are not really intelligent enough, uh, it was meant um, 
it was established that the rulers, the uh, political leaders, administrators, they supposed to make sure that people are not cheating. Because actually it is cheating. Okay, that I follow the exception because there was no cancellation of the exception, but the real reason is that I want to enjoy, right? And make an excuse that, okay, there was an exception, so I still follow it. But then there should be administrative or political leader who would say that, no, that you cannot do that. Unfortunately, in Kali Yuga, the standard is dropping and uh, even administrative or political leaders, they have no idea what is Dharma, what is Adharma. Rather, they support Adharma for a simple reason, because Adharma in Kali Yuga makes them popular. <laughs> and they can have the opportunity to, to be re-elected again. And so they are happily degrading together with their constituencies. And... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, very sad. Srila Prabhupada actually said he was so strong on this point uh, that he was saying that meat, eater, meat eaters can never uh, understand God, right? And uh, actually what's happening in the world is uh, really sad because actually meat production is much more expensive than uh, vegetarian food. Naturally, because so much grain you have to feed to the livestock and all. And so meat's supposed to be very, very expensive. But then how come that meat is so affordable and everyone can buy it? And sometimes actually the meat preparation in some restaurant or whatever eating place is costing less than vegetarian preparation. Uh, one time we were in Japan traveling from Tokyo to Osaka and we uh, had a little break at the place where you know they have all these shops and everything else. And so one devotee pointed out to me in the local cafeteria they were selling meat and vegetarian preparation and the cost of the meat preparation was cheaper than vegetarian preparation and i was really surprised i said how this is possible and he said it's very simple it's subsidized by the government that's why it's so cheap and if you look at the statistics in united states alone 38 billion dollars are going every single year to subsidize animal agriculture, to subsidize meat. And this is opposed to 17 million, which is given to subsidize, you know, vegetarian produce. So 38 billion opposed to 17 million. This is how it's all happening. If you know, like, to help people to get off meat, we don't even have to do anything. We just have to remove those subsidies. And then the meat prices will become so high that half of the population automatically will have to give it up, just for economical reasons, right? And, uh, yes, luckily, you know, that... Uh, People have been educated, um, people reading Srila Prabhupada's books, and uh, there are many other things happening which help them to understand that they have to give it up. And so we can see vegetarian, vegan movements are so strong in the world now, which is a very good news. And even doctors are saying that, even in the United Nations, they are saying that meat is poisonous and causes so many diseases. So there are so many reasons. Shri Prabhupada was saying that Krishna consciousness is 90% common sense. <laughs> Unfortunately, as Voltaire used to say, 
that common sense is not very common. That's the problem. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's really important that uh, governments uh, can understand these points as well and follow DARP and so how this is possible because they they do a wrong decision they make wrong decisions because they're in, in ignorance they have very little spiritual knowledge and understanding and uh, how can it be changed um so Prabhupada shows in his books in bhagavatam especially how the governments were organized uh, in Vedic times and that every king had Vaishnava Brahmanas who were guiding him and counseling and advising him and uh, this is this was the original system that spiritual and political leaders they work together hand in hand and uh, then historically what happened the religious leaders started degrading and then um, you know the kings lost faith in them and then they didn't want to follow their guidance anymore but then when the kings were left without the guidance they started degrading also and then they were rejected by the population and now you can see that the global society pretty much lost uh, spiritual and uh, royal guidance there are hardly any monarchies left in the world it's all uh, everything is governed by Vaishis and Shudras so this is why this situation is so precarious but actually if you look at the first purpose of ISKCON um, and if you take a note of the one of the last statements by Srila Prabhupada made before he left this world. He said, I, yeah, it's very amazing how Srila Prabhupada thought, how big Srila Prabhupada was thinking. That thinking big, that's Srila Prabhupada's hallmark, right? That he achieved so much, and of course we, everyone's astonished, even materialistic people astonished by his achievements, but then Srila Prabhupada said, I have executed only 50% of my mission because I gave you spiritual knowledge and spiritual practices, but the other 50% was to establish social spiritual structure, which, which is called Varnashram on the planet. And of course, Varnashram is little bit more than farming communities, farm communities. Nevertheless, he was really pushing for farm communities at the end. And actually, I was thinking, why? Because it was not the focus of Srila Prabhupada's uh, mission for most of the years of his preaching farm communities. And suddenly, towards the end, he started really emphasizing farm communities. And uh, my humble conclusion that, you know, uh, there are so many senior Vaishnavas here. You can correct me if it is wrong, but uh, my understanding is that Srila Prabhupada could see that being in the cities does not really um, help devotees with their Krishna consciousness. They get influenced by bad association. And so he wanted them to be out of that bad association. And you know, you can see that being employed is to be at the bottom of the social structure and it's not very conducive for Krishna conscious development. And so at least Srila Prabhupada wanted devotees to be self-employed or as he was saying, self-sufficient. So my understanding is this was the actual purpose uh, why Srila Prabhupada was insisting on farm communities. He wanted devotees to be independent on the in, of the influence of external systems upon them, right? He wanted them to be independently thoughtful, right? But the big picture 
is, and we'll come back to that point, it's also connected to the second paragraph, Svadharma. But the big, big picture is, what is Varnashram? That's first purpose of ISKCON. This is what the full Varnashram is. To systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and educate all peoples. Someone edited and put all people. Actually, the original Prabhupada statement is all peoples, meaning all nationalities of all different countries in the world. Right? Not just people, not just some people, but peoples. Everybody. All inclusive. Um, educate all peoples about the techniques of spiritual life in order to check the imbalance of values in life and achieve real unity and peace in the world. So it's really challenging purpose, right? I think it's much easier to go to the spiritual world than achieve that purpose because that purpose expects us to create spiritual world out of the material world. <laughs> to turn material world into the spiritual world. This is what this purpose actually indicates. <laughs> so it's very tall order. And yet, as Srila Prabhupada was mentioning that when spiritual master gives an instruction, and yeah, we can accept the first purpose of ISKCON as his direct instruction, he also gives us the power of executing that instruction and of course, there are many ways um, we can think of how can we execute that instruction. But uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, it's based on Srila Prabhupada's statement that ISKCON is meant to create Brahmanas in the society. Actually, the modern society has everything materially but it's really missing the guidance, missing the direction. And so he expected ISKCON uh, to be the training uh, facility to make people into Brahmanas, not just you know ritualistic performers, but actually the spiritual heads of the world, people who have the qualification to advise to the government heads of different countries in the world. That's pretty tall order as well. <laughs> but this is what Srila Prabhupada expected. And so how do we do that? I mean, you go to the president of any country and try to advise them. <laughs> you know, it's like how much they will listen. But, so First, it requires establishment of relationship with them, right? And it's very interesting that we follow Srila Prabhupada's um, example in so many ways because he was distributing books, his own books. We're distributing his books because he was doing Harinams personally, we're doing Harinams because he was. Uh, distributing prasadam, we're distributing prasadam. But there are two other things which he was doing very, very regularly and was really focusing on these things. And these two are interfaith relations and government relations. And they are under the um, common category of communications. He was doing them very, very regularly because he saw these two as important components to achieve the first purpose of his cone, apparently. And unfortunately, these two are not given that kind of priority we're giving, um, you know, to other uh, activities. But nevertheless, these two are very important. Because, again, my humble understanding is that sincere followers of any tradition can become our partners in achieving common goal, which Srila Prabhupada established as 
creating God conscious society. And he was actually saying about this, let's work together to establish God consciousness in the society. And again, government authorities can be a huge support or facilitation for us to do things on the scale by which so many people can get Krishna consciousness. And uh, I have small experience of that when I was um, in charge of one community in Russia. And uh, then, yeah, we established relationship with the um, local city administration. We were going there and, you know, like giving them whatever, some Prabhupada's books, prasadam, some incense, some little gifts. And talking with them, and then uh, the assistant mayor, he was very favorable to us. And then we started inviting him to our festivals. And he was really appreciative of it. And that we've used that leverage. We, we've used his uh, disposition to get permissions for Harinams, for different things, etc., as we normally do, right? <laughs> Taking advantage. But then at one point, I've, took, I, I've taken one course, uh, a couple of senior devotees conducted a course on seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey, and it's quite interesting how well it is matching with our principles. And um, one point in there that whatever you do has to be mission-driven. And mission of the organization has to be very relevant for every member of the organization. And I was thinking that our mission is seven, seven purposes of ISKCON, right? The entire mission is clearly outlined in there. Seven points. Everything is there. Everything's covered. But then I was thinking, it, you know, because it was, it's been explained that, okay, there is, you know, global mission of the organization, but how much it is relevant for, on the local level, and how much it is relevant for individual members, I mean, I don't want to even ask this question because there is such a low awareness of the seven purposes of ISKCON that there are very few devotees. I'm sure in here there are more, you know, like senior devotees, especially Prabhupada disciples, like Sovas Prabhu and others uh, know the seven purposes really well. But there are many, many ISKCON members who have no idea, even like, what did I join? <laughs> what is ISKCON? What are the purposes of ISKCON? And so <clears throat> I was thinking that it's really important to discuss and personalize, customize the seven purposes of ISKCON for local and individual level. And then once individual members own those purposes, they can really dedicate themselves, their lives to that. And then we spent some time discussing that and we came up with customized statement mission statement based on seven purposes of iscon for our city and it was really exciting for us and then i was thinking let me try it out and talk to the assistant mayor and introduce him that mission statement and see what he thinks about it and then we came to his office and we said, and you know, like his normal reaction was, okay, these guys had come to ask for something, right? They need me to do something for them. So he asked, so what can I do for you? Why did you come this time? What is it that you want? And I really surprised him. I said, actually, we came to you not because we want something from you, but because we want you, we want to help you in your work. 
you have that high responsibility and actually our purpose is to help you with your responsibility. And he was really confused. He said, what do you mean? How can you help me? And he joked, he said, you want to help me? Okay, that I have so much of cleaning service to do, like trash removals and all. Would you be involved in that? He winked at us and uh, I said, we actually don't mind anything, but if you engage us according to our purposes, that will be much more effective. He said, what are the purposes? So I pulled out the mission statement and I said, you can read it. And you can see what we are good at, what we are specializing in. And in these things, we can really help you. You know, education, festivals, and uh, creating unity and peace and all these things. So he started reading the mission, our mission statement, and he got really worried. He said, do you want me to become Hare Krishna? <laughs> I said, not that fast. <laughs> But we wanted your feedback. Uh, you know, how do you think we can be useful for this city with our purposes? And then the miracle happened. He started telling us things we could never expect him to say. First, he was like a little hesitant, but I kind of pushed him. I said, come on, you've been to our festivals. You know us pretty well. You know what we're good at. So please tell us what can we be effective in in working with the city. And he said, yes. Actually, when I come to your festivals, you create very amazing family atmosphere, which I never seen anywhere. It's very formal everywhere. So, you know, we conducting our city festivals, but we cannot create that atmosphere. But you guys can do that. So I want you to take part in all city festivals. We'll organize it for you. And then I said, anything else? He said, yes. Your books are also very interesting. But not everyone can afford those books. There are some people who cannot pay. So let's think how to subsidize your books and make sure they're available for everyone with no restrictions in terms of price. I said, okay, anything else? He said, yes, and your food is so amazing. I think we should give you time on local channel so that you could actually do cooking classes on the TV so that all the people would learn how to make this food. And I was thinking, wow, my God, if we would ever ask these things, he would never over it but we just told him you know like think about it how can you engage us and then he started coming up with these things and yes next city festival they put us right in the center of the equation you know the big stage our devotees were there doing cultural program and so many I mean like hundreds of thousands of people attended that and they all were pretty excited and actually they had very little interest to other things which were happening and then you know the time was coming to the end it was already like late night and so officially it was all over we stopped activities on the big stage because the time was over and then you know while everything was wrapping up we were doing Harinam on the side and all the people from big stage, they came to Harinam. And they stood around Harinam. And we were thinking, okay, this is good. But then we've done half an hour of Harinam. And we thought, okay, let us go home. But then people started shouting, where are you going? We want festival to continue. You know, besides you guys, there is nothing exciting happening in here. So carry on chanting. And I said, okay, that if you want us to continue, then I want you to chant with us. And someone said, but we don't know the, with the words. How can we chant? I said, okay, it's very easy to learn. So I taught them Hare Krishna Mantra. 
And it was amazing. It was probably a couple of thousand people around us. Can you imagine a couple of thousand people doing kirtan? You know, new people who never chanted. That was really thrilling. So we've done, you know, chanting. We've done Harinam with them for another hour, perhaps. And then it was really getting late. And we were getting tired as well. And so I said, okay, thank you very much. Now we're going home. And they said, no, you're not. <laughs> we want you to carry on. And I said, okay, if you want us to continue, I want you to dance with us. And they said, that we can do. Chant and dance. And so for next half an hour, the entire crowd was dancing like anything. And that was something exceptional. And then it it got really late, you know, past past eleven. I said, okay, you know, we are really sorry, but we are living very spiritual lifestyle. You know, early to bed, early to rise. We have to go to our ashram and take rest. And one girl <laughs> said, "We want to go with you. <laughs> we want to stay with you." And I thought it's a joke. I said, okay, you can come with us. We are going now. You can come with us if you want. And so we just turned around and with Harinam we started walking. And I thought they stayed back. But when I turned around, I saw that all these thousands of people are following us, <laughs> chanting and dancing along the way. And I'll be honest, I was horrified. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> they will come to Ashram. What, then what we will do? So we actually, believe it or not, we had to run at the top speed just to, you know, like get separated from them, etc. <laughs> so I was thinking this is an example of what is possible if we achieve what Srila Prabhupada recommends at the end of this amazing chapter. And if you look at it, you know, jumping ahead a little bit. Because this statement is very profound and it actually illustrates how the social spiritual development can happen. Uh, this is purport to text 45. Um, he says, without state support, without government support, no doctrines or philosophy or religious principles can progressively advance. There should be complete cooperation between the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas for this common good. Even up to Maharaja Shok, the same spirit was prevailing. Lord Buddha was sufficiently supported by King Ashoka, and thus his particular cult of knowledge was spread all over the world. And so this is one important aspect, and the other one is Swadharma. And uh, it's very interesting that this particular verse is repeated almost verbatim in Bhagavad Gita twice. Shayan Swadharma Vigunan Parada Matsvanushtitat. First time it is uh, it comes in third chapter. I believe it's text thirty five, three thirty five, if I'm not mistaken. And then Braupat uh highlights second uh, time when uh, Krishna says that in 1848. And so, yeah, it's much better to execute duties Svadharma Vigunan according to your nature. All of us have specific nature. Each and every one of us is different and we have specific qualities and specific abilities. And so if we totally uh, focus on that only and do that only, you'll be very, very successful. And if you engage that in the service of the Lord, you'll get eternal benefit yourself and you will benefit eternally everybody else. So. There's a few thoughts. Of, okay, of course, it's a big subject matter, but uh, I'm sure there are many devotees here who could uh, uh, comment or yes. 
Vijay Prabhu. Which city was that in? Chelyabinsk. Russia. Yeah, Urals, yeah. Yes, Archita Prabhu. Jai Maharaj, thank you for a very, very thought-provoking presentation. Hare Krishna. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Uh, just on the uh, editing note, because it's become, you know, almost dangerously manifest that people attack the BBT editors. People? And so, yeah, devotees are fomented to attack the BBT editors unnecessarily. So this business of peoples and people, it's actually the same. Peoples is an archaic way of saying people. There's really no difference with, with, with the S or not the S. It's just like in all of Prophet's books, you'll see referred men, meaning men and women. But of course, yeah. in modern times, people don't see that. So they want you to become gender specific or gender neutral yeah. or whatever. So men in those days meant everybody. Yes. Men and women meant humankind. So similarly, peoples are the same as we would use people nowadays. Yeah. It means the same thing. There's no difference. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Someone else? Upper Obramo. I like the, that example you gave about Prabhupada is doing book distribution, prasadam distribution, etc. And then you mentioned government interaction and also... Interfaith. Interfaith, interfaith. yeah. Since we do have Drew to Karma here, we can also mention Bhaktivedanta Institute. Yes, the scientists. scientific preaching, yes. And uh, so you mentioned about the mission statement. Did you say that you honed it down when you approached this uh, mayor? And, and, or did you give him the full seven? Yes, uh, we've customized seven purposes of Wisconsin for our city. You know, we put the name of the city and we kind of uh, customize the language a little bit so that it is relevant and clearly understandable for everyone, not even uh, devotees. All right, Prabhu. Maharaj. I totally agree with what you have said because I do not know in this audience if people know that we are having obviously we know that there is a huge immigration issue going on right now in the United States but there is an organization called BCFS which basically stands for uh, uh, BCFS stands for the church uh, just trying to remember we have the Anglicans and we have the uh, no, the Catholics, and we have in the Protestants, we have the, they start with B. Baptist. Baptists, yeah. So it yeah. actually starts for the Baptist Christian uh, Society. And what they are doing, that they are specializing in how to deal with migrant children. And they are being paid by the government, by the federal government of the United States of America, millions of dollars to take care of this situation. So what happens when the children are being separated? Because I have a hotel, I have a facility which the BCFS has rented on a month-to-month -month basis. And basically what they're doing is that they are taking care when the children are separated from their parents and they're placed in these uh, facilities, the government does not have the capability mm -hmm. to actually handle this. So the Baptist church has trained and has reached out to the government and, and has told the government, we have the capability to be case managers to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. And the president of the United States, which was even President Obama during his time, this B Baptist church organization is the one that is now taking care of all the detention facilities in case managers. So that mm. is a help that has been given by the church to the government. Having said that, ISKCON has a lot of programs, but ISKCON's leadership doesn't look at it in any way that way. Now my question is, you're the next generation, you're our generation. What is it happening in ISKCON today that is going to change that momentum? Because our old momentum doesn't think that way, doesn't do things that way. 
We speak a lot, but we don't really follow. We don't have action plans. ISKCON has a very good food for life program. We can also approach it from the vegan concept and say, hey, there is schools, they're looking for vegan options. ISKCON is the leader of food for life vegan in the world. We have ways to do things. Is there something, the new leadership that you're coming in with ISKCON trying to do certain things for the future? Yes, thank you, Bravo. It's a very big question. And my understanding is that <clears throat> we have organizational structure, but it always depends on individual initiatives of each members. And normally, if you see that, how it's happening in our society, that you know, uh, people are taking responsibility for some area, and then as a recognition of their achievements, they have been given a certain position in ISKCON. It's practically happening with every single leader in our society. It's not that one was never doing anything and then one is kind of, uh, you know, elected or promoted and then starts doing something. And so it shows that, um, yeah, we have to rely on individual strength of our members rather than on institutional chain of commands because uh, that you know you know if someone never did anything and then they are elected or promoted then it's very unlikely that they will ever do something useful yes uh Archita Prabhu. this is not a new situation these kind of opportunities come and go and devotees have been involved for instance in halfway programs for drug addicted people Devotees have been involved in that kind of thing, setting up houses, feeding them. But the danger is, if you lose your Christian conscious perspective, you become affected. Yes. Either, by, either by the money that you make from that situation yes. or the association of the bad people. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. We're not, like Prophet said many times, we're not a social welfare organization. The world is full of such organizations. Red Cross, this cross, yes. that cross. We are a spiritual organization. So we don't want to get we don't want to get rebranded as something watered down. And yes. again, on the individual level, you have to be very careful. We have devotees who went down that road. They set up halfway houses for drug addicted people and they fed them and got them to chant Hare Krishna. But over time they became affected. We've seen mm -hmm. it. Yes. Their own sadhana slipped. Their own focus on Christian consciousness slipped. Because of the money that you can make, like he's saying, the, these Baptist people are making millions of dollars. But how much spiritual progress are they making? <laughs> Yeah, this is what Srila Prabhupada was saying. Uh, catch the big fish without getting wet. Yeah, one has to be expert, of course, in doing something big. I think we need to stop here because uh, the time is uh, over. But, uh, you know, if you have individual questions or comments, I would love to uh, interact with you personally. Thank you all very much. Grantarat Shimad Bhagavatam Kija, Shala Prabhupada Kija, Nitai Gor Premanandi. Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Kijai.